How's it going, YouTube? It's been a while. Uh, <laughs> um, thought I would do an update video on the season. I have, sorry I haven't been doing a lot of videos. Um, I hope you didn't think that I had died or given up on the channel or stopped playing golf. Uh, none of those things are true. Thank goodness I'm still alive. Uh, but thank goodness I'm still playing golf. And yeah, uh, the, the channel is here and I'm going to do an update video. Um, <clears throat> so where am I at? Well, if you're just joining us, I set up this channel just to sort of document my return to playing golf in general and then with a goal of playing some tournaments. Um, so I played, I've played three tournaments, uh, three very, very good tournaments here in the local New York City area. Um, as, as precursor goals to getting that done, I had a couple things like what could I, <clears throat> what could I do using, you know, indoor um, training, you know, without really, because I don't really have access to a range that much or practice facilities that, you know, maybe other areas of the country do, but here in New York, we definitely, you know, ranges are hard to find, practice facilities are hard to find. So how could I go to YouTube, use some training aids, you know, focus indoors, what could I do to help me get better? Then could I get better doing that and combining, you know, working on my mental game and my, you know, uh, course management skills. Uh, and then also, you know, ball striking. And then if I could get my handicap low enough, could I play in some tournaments? So yes to all of the above. All the goals are been satisfied. Uh, I got my, I think I'm tracking to be like a 1.3 now. Um, so let's talk about some tournaments. I'm going to try to not <laughs> use excuses. It's going to be probably impossible and pretty hard, but I'm going to give you my results. Uh, so I played in three tournaments. The first one was at Best Page Black. Uh, it was my first tournament in 12 years. We played it basically from the U.S. Open. I played about 7,300 yards. Um, and the greens were freaking fast. So the local tournaments here by the group that's the, M the MGA or the local golf association up here, and I'm sure this is everywhere in the country, but boy, oh boy, are these greens fast. Um, I talked to one of the guys after the round, and he said if the PGA played at 12.5, we played at just under 12. And the pins were hard. <laughs> so with all that being said, I shot 84. Um, definitely was not driving well. So I'm going to go through what I did to address some of my, uh, my problems in my score. So not sound, doesn't sound like a great score. I'm going to say it's not a bad score, and the cut was 80. I almost made the cut in my first tournament. I played with some really good guys, great players. They both made the cut. Uh, fantastic players and just great stand-up guys. Uh, it was great to play tournament golf again with them. Um, then I played in um, the... What did I play next? Well, I played the qualifier for the uh, MGA Senior Open. Uh, and I didn't know the course. Oh, no, I played the uh, USGA Mid-Am Senior Open. That's right. I played the USGA Mid-Am Qualifier in between that. So my second term was the Mid-Am Qualifier. Again, I didn't know the course. Nassau Country Club, incredible course. Uh, incredibly fast greens. Um, so I shot 79. Uh, I three-putted. Uh, four times from within 12 feet. That's how fast the greens were. I'm just not used to it. Um, they were crazy fast. Uh, the first hole, I played the back nine, first hole. Uh, nice, like, 155, par three, you know, a little back ledge, left pin. I, I hit it to eight feet, and I almost three-putted. In, in fact, I did. I think I did three-putt. <laughs> so that was sort of the case of the whole day. Um I don't think it was really hurting me. There was a couple of calls that, because I didn't know the course, I got a couple bogeys. But um, so 79 there. Uh, so 84, 79. Uh, but yeah, four three putt greens. Um, again, not driving it well, so we'll just talk about that. Uh, and then I played uh, after that the qualifier for the MGA Senior Open. Uh, again, didn't know the course. This one, I needed to know the course. It killed me. Uh, I shot 81, uh, but I took a quad <laughs> on the, four the 14th hole. Um, and it's just because I didn't know the hole. 
like it was sort of a weird poll. Like it, I'm trying not to make excuses. I took a, I took an eight, uh, and then made a pretty scrappy bogey the next hole after sort of doing the same thing, missing missing a shot in a, into a spot of the course where uh, I had to get a penalty, um, just not knowing the course. So you know. But that got me in. I birdied the last hole to get in on the number. Um, so, you know, not the not the most strenuous qualify if I qualify with 81. Uh, but, you know, they needed to fill the field, and it was great. Again, played great guys, um, really good players. Uh, both of the guys I played with got in as well. One guy shot 76 or 75, uh, really unassuming 75. Another guy shot 80. We both had trouble on uh, the back nine. Um, and then I played the senior open itself. Uh, so I did go for a practice round, um, and I shot 78, um, again, the super fast greens, uh, they weren't on the practice round because of all the rain we've been having up here. Um, you know, the greens were super slow and the wind was totally different. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy, you know, definitely the wind direction caused me a couple bogeys. Um, I didn't really do anything bad. Like I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm on both the qualifiers. Um, sort of spazzed out. You know, I'm on four footers. You know, I'm hitting everything too hard. I'm hitting everything three and four feet by, and I'm making them all. But it's like it's all at 50 years old, grinding over three and four footers all day. It, it makes you tired. So that's where we're at so i'm trending in the right direction so my handicap is now 1.3 but in a tournament so i'm mostly playing around if you know differentials and stuff like that of course right i'm playing around a four so you know work to do in tournaments so what am i doing to address that well i switch putters so i love the 8802 but that solid face it's just it's too hot for these modern greens um, in competitions around here at least so i went to the phil mickelson you know, putter I had with the insert, and so far so good. Uh, it came with a flat, fat, flat cat grip on it. Um, I'm jury still out if I like that. I, it's taking my hands out of the out of the short putts a bit too much. You know, I don't have. I mean, I do turn things over, but you know, it's just because I do a bad stroke. It's not because my hands are active. So either I'll take that grip off. I sort of like it as a training aid, or I'm just gonna hunt around and try to find a cheap one and put a different grip on it. You know, more pain. So anyways, and then driving. Driving was not happening on all of my tournaments this year. Um, and I couldn't really tell that because well, we can't hit drivers at my course uh, where I play. So it wasn't until I really got into events that I was like, yeah, my term, my driving stats were not good. Uh, so I sort of went into, oh, we have a guest here. Hello. Um, I've been toying around with M1 and 2 drivers, you know, a whole bunch of them. I had the M1 from 2016, I had an M1 from 2017, the 440 head, and then I had an M2 tour issue 2017. And for the life of me, I couldn't hit a draw with those things if, if I paid myself to hook it. Like, I was just hitting phase with them all. I don't know if they're fade bias or whatever. Um, I couldn't get the weights adjusted correctly. And I've never played a fade before. My my misses have always been to the left. You don't send them you know, blocking stuff out and hitting fades everywhere. So I threw in the towel on those and bought a Cobra F8 Plus. So I gained, I didn't get a chance to, I mean, I practiced with it a bit before the senior open. Uh, I was going to go play uh, the day before on Sunday, but the trains were all messed up. So I literally, my first round with it was the first round of a tournament and a fairly big one. Uh, you know, PGA winner in the field. Someone who played in the Masters was in the field. Daryl Kessner, who's like one of the probably preeminent teachers in the country uh, in the field. Pretty tough field. And, uh, uh, I think there's Jim McGovern shot 65 in the first day, so the cut ended up being like 74. So, I mean, I only missed this cut by four shots, and it sounds like a lot, but, you know. Anyway, so the driving, definitely the first few holes, getting used to it again. You know, I was hitting lefts again. 
pause the bogey in the first one. But I got it together, you know, halfway through the round. And, I, you know, played pretty good. Hit my iron solid. So I'm just going to keep toying. I've got the Tour AD DI7 shaft in it that I was using in my F7 last season. So that's uh, in the bag now. So a big change there. Big putter change and a driver change. But it has helped. Uh, I went and played the black course yesterday. Played off the whites. Didn't even drive it well, but shot 75. It's my best round on the black. So I uh, was pretty happy about that. So, yeah, we'll keep adjusting those things, working with those. And maybe I've been toying around with a bunch of shaft op and options in the M2s to try to get it going. I did the white tie. Uh, Acro shaft, as uh, I might, might have known, and then um, stock shaft that came with it, uh, another white tie earlier version. So maybe I'll take the white tie and uh, drop a cobra tip on it. I was actually hitting the M2 when I got the white tie going, like miles, like it was going a long way. Um, I just couldn't control it, like I couldn't. My stats were below fifty percent. You know, I think I hit one in the MG in the the first tournament on Best Page Black. I think I hit one fairway. Like it was not good. So that's already gone up. I think I hit I hit uh, fifty two fifty six percent of my fairways at the Open the MGA Open. And I think I hit as a result. I hit I think I hit um, twelve or fourteen greens. So obviously not a great putting day. You know, I have 34 putts. Not good. So putting I have to work on. But, I mean, it's just working on it <clears throat> on, like, super fast greens, which uh, it's going to be a definitely adjustment. But I'll just keep playing tournaments. They're all set up like this, so I'll get used to it. Um, so that's where we're at. So the future of the channel. Well, I mean, I guess I'll check in, like, but I sort of reached my goals. So I'm pretty happy. Like, um, I like doing these videos, but it's literally just me sitting here talking. It's not me playing any golf or showing you how to play golf or what I'm doing. Um, because I just, as a, you know, if you're going to do golf, you're going to have to do golf. If you're going to do YouTube about golf, you're going to do YouTube about golf and you're not going to play your best golf. I'm just going to put it out there like that. There's just too much involved having cameras around and trying to create shots and keep us you know and i love these youtube videos I, I watch them all the time they're super engaging they're fun um i don't think it's conducive though to pre prepping for tournaments or like to be getting better at golf i just don't think you can do both um that being said you know if there's something fun um i'll do some reviews or whatever i have two new trading aids well one major one um i got my leaderboard training aid shipped down from Canada and I've been using that and I use it a lot. I use it almost every day. So what the leaderboard is, if you're not familiar with it, it's like a stability um, sort of lower body stabilizing training aid that Stuart Appleby and I think I can't remember his teacher is came up with in the in the early two thousands and I bought one. And it's great. Uh, I use it all the time. So, and it's been helping me. And it's, I think I've been definitely gaining some distance back. I've gained back a lot of distance. I've been also using the swing speed system. Um, so I mentioned I was going to do like an update video on that. I'll probably do a specific one at the end of the year. I keep on getting, they recommend that you do it three days, three times a week. Um, and I didn't want to take it to tournaments and do it on the, you know, on the practice range looking like a moron. So I've, I've, I was getting up to about twice a week with it, uh, and then the last two weeks I've been um, only once a week. But my if my goal is a hundred and a hundred and six, whatever that is, you know, on the radar and on the same conditions, um, I'm at a hundred. I'm tracking at one hundred and three hundred and four. So I go up, and then when I don't get a chance to do it, the two or three times a week, it slides back again. But I get you know, so I'm tracking in the right direction. Sort of state is keeping me at a hundred and four. Let's say miles per hour so my goal would be to get to 106 let's say by the end of this year which is the average on the champions tour which is whatever um but it's keeping me competitive you know i mean i was getting out driven a lot in the mid amateur events but i wasn't getting out driven that much in the senior events you know and these guys were hitting it a long way so i was not that far behind guys you know um 
So we'll keep doing that. So yeah, but the leaderboard has been great. So I put the training aid video that came with it. And there's a few people asking about it online, so it's there on my channel. Also put up the Brad Faxon video that I like to watch him and Bob Rotella, which talks about, which goes in sort of some of the things I've been doing on the mental side of my game. Like how do I work on that? Improve on that? It was a game, that was a video I bought uh, about 13 years ago when I was playing and I got a lot out of it. So maybe that'll help you as well. Um, so that's where we're at. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I have two more events, and then as a result of qualifying as an amateur for the Senior Open in the area here, I might be potentially able to get into an invitation-only event um, at the end in October. I got to write them and you know plead my case, but I might be able to get in. Um, that's a mid-am event, um, and then yeah, maybe next year. So then. I take a look at what my goals are and I'll reset my goals. My goals this year just were just to play in tournaments. It wasn't about being competitive or anything, but now that I'm being able to play and, and get my scores tracking in the right direction, um, maybe we reassess those goals. And so obviously I have to get stats up on the driver and get the putting, the putter, you know, behaving a little bit more uh, in competition and that'll help, you know, with some... Uh, with some scores, you know, I had some big numbers on there. I did, a, I tripled the eight on Beth Page Black. Um, again, because I, I was playing a tease that I, I never really play. I'm sorry, I'm going to make excuses, but um, there's a back bunker on the eighth hole. I don't know if you remember that hole down the hill over the little pond. The, we were playing a back tee. Well, sort of like the second to back tee. It was about playing about 190 downhill. And the pin was up in the back corner. And, uh, I didn't think I had enough clubs, so I yanked it into that bunker and then left it in the bunker. So and then I, I, I hit a good second bunker shot to about ten feet, and again, yeah, greens being super fast, blew it by six feet. You know, got a little, got a little aggressive. So on these greens, if you get aggressive at the wrong time, you pay the price. And it's, it's been real eye opening. It's been great. So yeah, you know, new respect for all those guys playing qualifiers. For some of you watching, uh, obviously the guys on tour. Are used to it, but it just shows you how tough these greens and conditions are. Um, so maybe next year I take a look, trying to make cuts, or you know. So the goal is the end goal. If I keep playing 55 to try to start getting into the U.S. Senior Amateur, and if I have the money to go over and you know tee it up on the British Senior um, qualifiers and try to get in. Um, so there we are. Uh, so hopefully there's, if I'm going to leave these videos up here, I'll probably start wrapping them up, you know, um, cause so many YouTube channels, they start out with these lofty goals and then they never make them and stop the channel, uh, or they change or whatever. So my approach was to keep the goals, not to set the bar high eventually, but to do it incrementally, like to do attainable goals that are still hard and I'll still get benefit from but if I think I could attain them, it's not like I'm, okay, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and try to get on PGA Tour. No, I'm going to try to get better. And how do you get better? Well, you analyze what you got to do. Then you set a goal and you try to do it. And then you see if you met the goal. So, yeah, I'll probably just leave this up here as a sort of like a document, something I can go back and look at, um, you know, check in with. Maybe I've just been helpful to look at some of my swings, you know, Okay, here I'm doing a little bit of movement. Uh, you know, I'm still doing the same thing. I've, I've been getting a lot better at keeping my angles. Uh, my ball striking has improved a lot. Um, I'm just my transition. I've been working on smooth transition. That's helped a lot. So you know, ball striking is, is great. You know, so I mean, not great, but it's better than it was. Um, so what we'll do is I'll keep playing the season. I got two more events I'm going to sign up for. Like I said, I might get in that third one. And then I'll just probably do a wrap-up video. Maybe I'll do some training stuff over the season, uh, over the off-season. But, you know, for now, I mean, that's probably it. You know, like, um, I'll, you know, I've got a little Instagram channel. I'll probably post the odd thing there. But this has sort of been the journey. So we started from not playing at all to almost making some cuts and qualifying for a tournament for a pretty good one. Um so, you know, maybe if you have some goals, you can look at these things and think about how to uh, analyze what you're doing and, and maybe, you know, break stuff down into smaller chunks. And 
try to attack them that way. It's not going to happen overnight. I mean, this was two seasons, full seasons of work. And I worked on the off season pretty hard, doing what I could do, you know, not sacrificing any other parts of my life, you know, to, um, and doing what I could do within my finances, which is, you know, pretty limited. I wasn't planning on playing a lot of golf in my later years, and now I am, and it's a lot of money. Uh, so, yeah, maybe those are those are things, those are takeaways. I don't know. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, you want me to talk about anything, do follow-up videos, put them in the comments. Um, the comments have been great. I'm glad everybody's been checking in. Um, yeah, so, you know, maybe I'll do... I'll think I say I'll, maybe I'll do an end of season with my full stats. Right now in tournaments, I'm hitting about 50% of my greens, uh, 50% of my fairways, um, and maybe 65% of greens, and then well, way too many pots. So those are things I got to work out. But you can only really do that by playing more tournaments because you got to be under tournament conditions, and <laughs> they are hard. So uh, yeah, there we are. Uh, so thanks you so much for coming along on this ride um you know i'm sure i'll do the odd video here and there but uh mission accomplished you know i gotta put the banner up <laughs> um and uh yeah i hope you uh are having a great season i hope you have some great fall successes if you're doing any qualifiers uh next year i hope they do well if you did them this year i hope you do well the guy in the mid am i played with got to be second alternate so i don't know his name but I, hopefully he gets into the tournament he played he shot 70 it was the most unassuming 70 even par round I, i've probably ever seen like yeah he was a really good guy really good player there the guy shot 74 he's been in the mid am a few times uh really good local players so um it was just good to sit and watch them you know navigate their way around the course i learned a lot from them but what watching what they did and where I can tighten up my game. So try to do that. If you, if you can get your handicap low enough, sign up for an event and you know, just, you know, get paired with some good players and just, you know, it's like having a front row. It's like having, like having a lesson, you know. So uh, so there we go. So I uh, hope your season goes great. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, it's been helpful just to have a diary to sort of, you know, do these things. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's like sticking a camera in front of yourself when you're playing golf behind yourself um, I mean it's maybe a training aid is helping but like going and documenting every call like it's fun to watch I do it all the time but if you're if you're doing it I don't think it's gonna help your golf game um, but that's just me so all right so uh, maybe we'll check in a few more times uh, keep them straight and we'll see you soon thanks for checking in